Good morning, everybody. Anna here. How are you this morning? So happy to have all of you on today. Want to make sure I'm live and you can hear me. Hold on. So happy yes. to have Looks like I am. How are you today? I hope everybody is well and rested and staying home and washing our hands and being safe because that's what we need to do. But today we are ready for another live with Anna. So just for those of you that are commenting on Facebook, so let me tell you how this is going to go. Typically I was doing a live Zoom call with all of our students that were coming on live. But unfortunately Zoom was having some security issues and um, there were people coming onto lives um, doing Zoom in Zoom meetings that weren't being um, appropriate for lack of a better word. Um, <laughs> so, um, so what I'm doing is I created a new Facebook group. It's called uh, Teaching Your Teaching My Child to Read. The link is above on my Facebook feed, and it's uh, it's uh, it's a Bitly link, and I called it uh, it's bit.ly forward slash Reading at Home with Anna. Now, in order to do our live Zoom meetings with the children in person on Zoom. I am all, I'm making a private Facebook group that will have a brand new link every day to protect our Zoom calls so they don't get hacked by any um, hackers on the internet because we know what they do. So this is how we're going to go forward with our lessons with our children because safety is the most important thing when we're online. So the way that we are circumventing these problems is we are creating a brand new private closed Facebook group called Teaching My Child to Read. And the link is above in my Facebook, uh, on my Facebook post. But I am not allowing anybody in the group that doesn't answer the questions. That's the way I can protect our live feed. You have to provide an email address for a parent. You have to tell me your child's name, first name, or you could even just put their initials like CJ or AD or whatever their initials are if you don't want to give their name. And I totally understand that. And their grade level. This is going to allow me to protect the sanctity of our Facebook group. If you don't answer the questions, you will not be granted access into the group. This is the way I'm going to protect our Zoom calls. So it's for the protection and the safety of your children on Zoom with me. So that is the reason why we have to ask these questions. Because if it was just an open group on Facebook, anyone can join in, and then there goes the safety of our Zoom calls. So when, if you want your child to participate in our live Zoom calls, where I can see them and they can see me and we can talk and chat and answer questions, you have to, you're going to have to join our private Facebook group. And again, it is for the safety of your child. As soon as I heard about these issues with Zoom, I immediately stopped using Zoom publicly. And the way we're going to circumvent that is by doing private Zoom calls in a closed private Facebook group. You'll still be on Zoom, but you'll get the link for the Zoom, a new one every single day inside of that Facebook group. That's the way we're going to protect our children on Zoom to ensure it's just me and them teaching and learning and having a good day. But if you do not answer the questions, you will not be granted access into the Facebook group. That is the way I protect the children. So I hope you can understand the rules of the group because that is the only way I can protect our Zoom calls to ensure that it's me and the children that are on live so I can keep teaching for you every day. So I hope you understand. We are not doing a live Zoom today. So have your child watch me on Facebook or YouTube. I hope I'm live on YouTube. My assistant said I'm not. My computer says I am, so you know, who knows lately? I don't know. Technology has been very, um, it's been very glitchy lately. So those of you that are, are watching me on Facebook, thank you so much. Please click that share button below. It's the only way that Facebook knows this is good content. Tell other people about it. And also please share this with your friends in your own communities that have children that are in grades one through four. This helps me reach more children, more parents with the ability to teach more and connect with more people. And that's the goal here, to connect with parents, connect with children, and keep this learning going over these next six, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 
whatever it might be. So that's the goal right now is to try to connect with as many children and to teach as many children as I can to ensure that they keep reading and writing over this next over these next couple of months where we don't really know what's going on. So that's the goal of these lives. I love doing them. They bring me a level of joy you can't possibly understand. But the way I'm going to protect the Zoom calls is through our private Facebook group. So again, if you want your child to join in, that will be the only way they will get the link to the Zoom is through our private closed Facebook group so no hackers can get in. That's the goal. Safety, 100%. Safety and then fun. All right? Another thing I want to tell you last thing, I am going to be providing a free calendar. Right now, there's six weeks of instruction on these calendars. I'm going to have one for kindergarten. I'm going to have two for first grade, two for second grade, one for third grade. And the reason why I'm doing two for first and two for second is because children that are in first grade can either be, you know, on grade level or maybe above grade level. If you have a first grader in their below grade level, then you'll want probably use the kindergarten calendar. If you have a first grader that's above grade level, you want to use certain books. If you have a second grader that's high second grade or above second grade, you'll use the high second grade. And if you have a child that's in second grade that might be struggling a little bit, you'll use the lower second grade calendar of lessons. So I'm trying to differentiate the instruction for you and your children as much as I can. So this will be done over the next two days. And I'm going to tell you everything that you're going to do with your children and every book that you can read with them, the sight words, the making words activity, which will help with phonics, the writing prompts, all of those different things. This is going to be linked to guided readers, guidedreaders.com. Our parent portal will be live hopefully in the next week. And uh, we are working very hard on that to ensure that you could put your children on guided readers and walk away. You don't have to teach them. We're going to do the teaching for you. So you can ensure that your children continue to read and progress in reading and not regress over these next two months possibly. So that's the goal. This will all be coming out within the next couple of days. And then I'm going to again be promoting our parent guided readers program. I already currently have our teachers guided reading pro guided readers program that parents can still take part in. You can absolutely still take part in it, but our parents will have full audios on the Google slides so you don't have to teach your children anything. We'll do the teaching for you. So that's just my little um, little spiel I wanted to get going. So again, if you're on Facebook, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate all of you coming on. Thank you so much for um joining me. Again, if you are on Facebook, please, I ask you share this. Just click that share button. It helps me reach more people. So boys and girls, if you are watching me live on Facebook, you can even say hi in the comments and I will answer your questions at the end. Even though I can't see your beautiful faces today, I am going to answer questions based on uh, your comments on Facebook and YouTube. You can even put comments in YouTube and I can show them on my screen. And then like, I'll show you one. Uh, let's see, uh, here's someone that just said, thank you for all you do for students and teachers. So you see how I posted that in the feed? You, I will show your question and then answer it for you. All right, so that's what we'll do at the end, but let's get started. Today, we're gonna to be reading the book, Ben Franklin, The Inventor. Ben Franklin was such an important part of American history. This man was an incredible person, and we are going to learn all of the incredible things that Ben Franklin did for our country that we still benefit from today. He was an amazingly, amazingly smart human being. And you're going to find out all the amazing things he did for our country as a founding father. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our sight words today. For those of you that are watching on Facebook and YouTube, ah, I see it. Jason and Marika. Oh, Marika. Marika. Oh, oh, my goodness. I see you guys are here. I'm so happy you're here on I see you on the comments, and I'm so excited you're watching, even though I can't see your beautiful faces today. Again, parents, just click that share button. It helps me reach more children. Let's get started, guys. Today, we're going to do three sight words. Now, even though I can't see you or hear you, I want you to do what I'm telling you to do. Let's get out our whiteboards or our white paper 
or our magnetic letters, whatever you're using today, all right? And we're gonna do some sight word practice. And remember, these are all different ways we could practice sight words. I give you lots of different choices. If you don't wanna do invisible magnetic, uh, invisible words, you can do sight words this way. So let's get started, my friends. You are going to look at these three sight words today. I'm pretty sure you could see them, yeah, okay. Awesome, oh, I love all the hearts and the love. Oh, you guys are the best, thank you so much. Here we go. Everyone, what is this sight word? This word, I want you to say it, even though I don't see you, I want some, I want those lips moving, and I want you to say the word, above. Say it again, above, very good. This sight word, everyone say it, what is the word? I can't see your lips today, but I want to, I want to feel like I can hear you. Below, everyone say below, good job. Last word, what is this one? Together, together. Now when we get to this word, I'm gonna tell you how I remember to spell that word because it's a pretty long word. So we're gonna do our um, magical words today with a white crayon and a marker, right? Now this is just a regular piece of paper. I got that question the other day. This is just a regular piece of paper, a white crayon and a marker. Are we ready boys and girls? Are we ready? Hi, Mason. Hi, guys. How are you? Marie Murphy, you're welcome. Neil's in the house again. Neil, you are going to get like the perfect attendance award, my friend. Good job, bud. I'm proud of you that you're here again. Awesome. And parents, if you're with them, you can absolutely have, you can tell your child's name in the comments if you want, and you can tell me that they're here. I would love to say hello to them. Let's write the word above. And remember, let's say each letter, A, B, O, V, E, above. Say the letters. A, B, O, V, E, above. Take your magic marker, because it's magical, and color over the word above, and it shows up. These are our mag magical, invisible words. Above. Did you do it? Did you do it? You can also give me thumbs up. Hi, Jack. Hey, uh, I am and Makai. Um, I think it's Makai or McKay. Josiah. Hey, Nicole, what's happening? Hi, Josiah. How are you? Good to see all of you. Hello. Good to see you guys. Unfortunately, I can't see your beautiful faces today, which makes me super sad. But tomorrow, you join that Facebook group. We'll be live tomorrow again. All right, next word is below. Say the letters as you write them. B E L O W, below. Let's make, use our magic marker because it's magical and color over those white letters. And we made the word below. B E L O W, below. There's my magical word. Now, you know I can't see it, but give me a thumbs up if you did it. You can give me a heart or a thumbs up if you're on Facebook. <gasps> Look at all the hearts. Look at all the hearts and the thumbs up. Good job, guys. I'm so proud of you. Even though I can't see your beautiful faces today, you're working hard. Whoop, 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 whoop. I love it. I'm so excited. All right. Now, this is our last sight word today, together, right? Now, when I was in my second grade class, I always taught my children how to spell the word together. And the way you could always remember it is, we know this word is to, and then this word in the middle is get, to, get, and then her, to, get, her. Let's try it again, to, and then we have get, you see get, and then her. And that's how you can remember the word together. To get her, to get her, to get her. That's how you can remember how to spell the word together. To get her. So as you're writing it, you say the letters and you can even say to get her and then say together. It's just an easy way to remember that word together. To get her, to get her. Color over it, together. We are together today. We are together today, together. Very good, did you do your magical words? Give me thumbs up. Oh my goodness, look at all the hearts. Holy cannoli. <laughs> good job, guys, way to go. I'm so proud of you. Even though I can't see your faces today, which makes me super sad, but hey, 
got to make the best of it, right? Got to roll with the punches. Good job. Let's say our words. Even though I can't hear you, I want you to hear yourself. What's this word? Above. Everyone say it again. Above. Let's say the letters. A, B, O, V, E. Above. This one. These are antonyms, right? Above, below. Above, below. These are antonyms, right? Here we go. Below. Spell it. B, E, L, O, W. Below. Say it again. Below. The last one is together. And the way we remember it is to get her. To get her. To get her. Great way to remember how to spell together. T O G E T H E R. Together. Good job, boys and girls. Excellent. Give me a thumbs up if you did together with your magical words or your rainbow words, or your magnetic letters. Maybe some of you are using magnetic letters. Many of you were doing that the other day. Good job, awesome work. All right, here we go. We are gonna move on to our book today called Ben Franklin, The Inventor. I am so excited to share this book with you because Ben Franklin is one of my favorite people to read about because you know what? He invented so many cool things. So many cool things that you don't even know he invented them, but so many things. So I'm so excited to share Ben Franklin with you today. So I am going to share my screen and we're going to read Ben Franklin. All right, here we go, guys. Let me share my screen. All right, you should see Ben Franklin now. Want to make sure you could see it. Everyone see Ben Franklin? Give me a thumbs up if you could see Ben Franklin. Oh, good. Thumbs up. Here we go. Anya, just make sure you can uh, let me know if you can hear this as well. Just want to make sure. Anya, just let me know if you can hear Ben Franklin. Here we go, boys and girls. Ben Franklin. Here we go. Ben Franklin, the inventor. Ben Franklin, the inventor. Here we go. I'm going to read the table of contents today. Here we go. Table of Contents. Who was Benjamin Franklin? Page four. Swimming fins. Page six. Street lamps. Page seven. Odometer. Page eight. Bifocals. Page nine. Franklin stove. Page ten. Long arm. Page eleven. Electricity and lightning rods. Page 12, Glossary, page 14. Okay, here we go, boys and girls. Let's learn about Benjamin Franklin. Franklin did many oops, other things oops, Hold on, sorry, started on the wrong page. Who was Benjamin Franklin? Benjamin Franklin was born in 1706. He was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Massachusetts was a colony of Great Britain at the time. Twelve nearby colonies were also ruled by Great Britain. Franklin helped the 13 colonies become independent. He was one of the founding fathers of the United States. Benjamin Franklin is on the $100 bill. Two, he was a postmaster and an inventor. He ran a newspaper and a printing business. He started the first United States public library. He wrote books. This is one of them. This book of Franklin's was printed every year for 25 years. It contains weather information, advice, and more. Okay, so you missed, you might have missed the first sentence. It said, Franklin did many other things too. He was a postmaster and an inventor. Just want to make sure you heard that. Swimming fins. Franklin loved to swim. As a boy, he invented swimming fins to swim faster. He held two flat oval pieces of wood in his hands. Thumb holes made them easier to hold. Franklin used them to pull back water and move forward. Swimming fins. Street lamps. Street lamps burned oil and glass globes. They became dirty very fast. They were also easy to break. Franklin saw why they got so dirty. No air flowed inside them. He invented a new street lamp. It had four flat pieces of glass. It let air flow inside. 
It stayed cleaner, so it lit up better. Street lamp. Franklin's street lamps burned whale oil. So think about that. Do we have do we still have street lamps today? Absolutely. Now they don't function the same way as Benjamin Franklin's street lamps function because his street lamps functioned with and by burning oil. Our street lamps now run on electricity. But he invented street lamps. How cool is that? Odometer. Franklin was a postmaster for many years. He traveled a lot to look at roads and post offices. He wanted to find the fastest roads for mail carriers. Franklin invented a new kind of odometer. This tool measured how far mail carriages traveled. He used the trip length to figure out how much people should pay to send mail. His odometer helped the postal service earn money. Odometer. Now our postal service all earns money today because we mail letters. And this was Ben Franklin's invention, figuring out how to charge people to mail letters and how much we would have to charge people way back when to send mail to their houses. Bifocals. Franklin had two pairs of glasses. One pair was for reading. The other pair helped him see things that were far away. Franklin didn't like having to change glasses. He invented double spectacles. Spectacles is another word for eyeglasses. The top part helped him see things far away. The bottom part helped him read. Today, we call these glasses bifocals. And bi Early bifocals. And bifocals still exist today. Ask your parents if they wear glasses. Do they have bifocals? Benjamin Franklin is the one that invented these. How cool is that? And they still exist today. Franklin stove. People used to heat their homes with fireplaces. Most of the heat was lost up the chimney. Also, fireplaces used lots of wood. Franklin invented an iron stove. It used less wood. It gave off heat from every side. It was also safer and made less smoke. It was called the Franklin stove. A modern kind of Franklin stove is still used today. Franklin stove. So people still use stoves like these. They're called wood burning stoves and they have these in their houses to heat their homes. So people still use these types of inventions today. Long arm. Franklin loved to read. He often needed to get books from high shelves. When he was older, he didn't feel safe climbing a ladder. He invented a simple machine known as a long arm. It had two wooden fingers on a long piece of wood. The fingers had a cord. Pulling on the cord made the fingers open or close. They grabbed books from high shelves. Modern grabber tools are a lot like Franklin's long arm. They help people get things from hard to reach places. And we still have objects like this today. Electricity and lightning rods. Long ago, people did not understand electricity. They didn't know how it worked. Franklin wanted to learn about it. He did some experiments. He showed that lightning is electricity. Franklin did an experiment to show that lightning was electricity. He flew a kite during a thunderstorm. He fastened a wire and a key to the kite. Electricity went through the wire and into the key. His experiment was a success. Lightning is very dangerous. Franklin wanted to help keep buildings and people safe. He invented a lightning rod. It is a metal rod placed on a building. A wire connects the rod to the ground. If lightning strikes, it goes down the wire into the ground. The building and the people inside it stay safe. Ben Franklin holds a lasting place in American history. He changed the world in many important ways. Lightning rods are still used today. Glossary. Carriages. 
Large machines with four wheels that carry people and are pulled by horses. Colony. A settled area controlled by another country and occupied by settlers from that country. Connects. Joints together. Dangerous. Able to cause harm. Electricity. A form of energy carried through wires and used to make many lights, machines, and other things work. Experiments. Scientific tests that involve doing something and carefully observing the results. Founding Fathers. The men who played an important part in setting up the United States government. Globes. Round objects. Grabbed. Took hold of. History. The study of things that happened long ago. Wow. Didn't Ben Franklin invent so many things? It's pretty incredible all of the amazing things that he invented that we still use today. It's pretty incredible all of the unbelievable things he did as an inventor, as one of our founding fathers. He was super smart and he used his brain to help him come up with new ideas and inventions that we still use today, which is super cool. Did you like the book, Ben Franklin, The Inventor? Give me thumbs up or some hearts so I know. Oh, good. Cassandra says, Cassandra says, I know this book. I read it with my teacher and really like it. That's great, Cassandra. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you love it. One of my favorite books, and I love Ben Franklin because he did so many amazing things for our country. So today, when we do some writing about Ben Franklin, we are going to think about cause and effect relationships again today when we do our writing and our comprehension activity. We're going to talk about cause and effect relationships, about what Frank Franklin did. We're going to say what happened, what happened, and we're going to think why those things happened. All right? So we're going to talk about that right after we do our phonics work and we do some making words activities. So are you guys ready for our making words activities? Give me some thumbs up so I know that you're ready. That's how I'll know because typically I'm looking at you on Zoom and you show me your thumbs up, but I can't see your beautiful faces today. So we have to make do with our thumbs up on Facebook, all right? I see some of you are doing Funny faces and mean faces. You're killing me, people. <laughs> I need hearts and love, all right? All right, my friends. Today, we're going to make some words. Now, the other, uh, the last couple of times we did making words, we worked on the R sound. A-R, the bossy R. We worked on O-R as well, right? Today, we're going to work on I-R, R, if, if it sounds like er now er also sounds like er so that's why the ir and the er bossy r's are always a little bit confusing for us because they sound the same so today get out your making get out your magnetic words get out your uh magical words if you're going to do magical words or get out your whiteboard whatever it is that you're going to use we're going to make some er words today with the bossy r using our IR combination of letters to make the er sound. All right, boys and girls, the first word I'd like you to make, ready? The first word I want you to make is first. <laughs> so the first word I want you to make is first. First, let's do it. Here we go. Er. First, first, first. Now remember, we always, what do we do? We tap and pull. Now I can't see you today, but I want to make sure you're tapping and pulling. You ready? Now we're going to put our F together, our F sound, then our IR sound, and then we're going to blend our ST. You ready? First, first. Do it again. First, first. Remember, we want to put together our blends. ST is a blend. We want to blend those together. First. First. Good job. Do it under the word. First. First. Good job, guys. Now, you know I can't see you, so I hope that you're making them, writing them magical words 
Give me a thumbs up if that's what you're doing. I hope so. I hope so. Here we go, guys. Now, I want you to change the word first to the word firm. 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 Change the word first to the word firm. Firm. When I touched the orange, it was very firm, like I couldn't squeeze it. Or I can say, I called the law firm to get my important papers. So there's different ways and different meanings for the word firm. So the one with the orange it means it's a little bit hard, firm. How do we do it? We're going to change first to firm. Let's blend it. Touch and pull. Here we go. Er, mm, firm. Do it again. Er, mm, firm. Good job, guys. I see you guys working. Way to go. Camilla loves this. Oscar just told me. Good job. Excellent. Very good. Excellent. You guys are doing great. Aiden is here. Le Leia is here. Good job. So good, guys. So good. So let's put our fingers under it. Er, mm, firm. Do it again. Er, mm, firm. Good job. Okay, I want you to change the word firm. Now we're changing a couple of letters here. Change the word firm to the word girl. This one's hard because we're changing a couple of different things. Change the word firm to the word girl. Change the word firm to girl. The little girl rode her bike. Girl. I love that some of you are writing the, how you say this, uh, how you spell it in the comments. Good job. Awesome. Way to go. Latanya, she wrote girl. Excellent. Good work. Way to go, guys. Way to go. Lynn did it. Excellent. Good work. So, girl, g -er -ool. So, I have to change to a G, g -er -ool. and bring my L. This is how we spell girl. Let's blend it. Touch your fingers. Pull. Here we go. G -er -ool. Girl. Do it again. G Girl, girl, excellent. Do it under it. G girl, girl, do it again. G girl, girl, excellent. You guys are doing great. Here we go. Change the word girl. This one's hard again. Changing a couple of letters, getting more difficult. Change it to the word dirt. Dirt. Change the word girl to the word dirt. Girl to dirt. And if you want to type it in, you can definitely do that also. Definitely do that also. You can absolutely write it in. Way to go, guys. So we're changing girl to dirt. D -er -t. Dirt. Tap and pull. Here we go. Neil says he misses the Zoom class. I know. I know, Shanna. I miss seeing Neil and all of the kids, too. That's why everyone's got to get into our private, closed Facebook group because that's the way we're going to get back to Zoom where I can see your beautiful faces. All right? So you've got to request to join. You've got to answer the questions. I will not let anyone in, all right, without answering questions. It's to keep the children safe. That's the goal. Here we go. Let's blend. D -er Dirt. Do it again. D -er -t. Dirt. Excellent. Under the letters. D -er -t. Dirt. Again. D -er -t. Dirt. Way to go, guys. Excellent. All right. Here we go. Change the word dirt to the word. This one's tough. Shirt. Change the word dirt to the word shirt. Change the word dirt to the word shirt. Oh, Jennifer says, um, I miss I miss the Zoom class too. Oh, Caitlin says it. Caitlin, I do too. I miss it too. Good job, guys. Don't forget, the link for the private Facebook group is above. 
join it. And tomorrow you can come live with me and Zoom again, all right? I miss your faces too. I miss those smiles and everything. Here we go, guys. Let's change dirt to shirt. Shirt. Now look, that SH makes the shh sound. It's a digraph. So we don't say sh, huh. it's shh together. It makes a completely different sound. Let's blend it, touch and pull. Here we go. Shh, er, t, shirt. Do it again. Shh, er, t, shirt. Good job, guys. Shirt. Way to go. Underneath it. Here we go. Shh. Er, t, shirt. Run your finger under it. Shh, er, t, shirt. Way to go. Give me some thumbs up so I know you're with me. And we're rocking and rolling. Are you doing your little dances today? Are you doing those dances? Dance with me virtually. We dance because we're happy and we're doing a good job. It keeps our brain alert and working and ready to go. Are we dancing? Good, we're dancing. Excellent. Very good. Here we go. Last word is the word skirt change shirt to the word skirt skirt let me see how you do that i'm not going to do it just yet let me see how you do it first even though i can't see you which makes me very sad but tomorrow we are going to be back on again as long as you join the private facebook group it's the only way to get waited way to get into the zoom for all of our safety and fun all right here we go we changed shirt to sk skirt. Now, if you use the C, if you use the C, it's not a C here, which is really, it's just, it's crazy sometimes because we know if we were writing the word school, it would be SC, right? But in this word skirt, it's SK. So we know C also makes the cook sound and it also makes the sound as well. So let's blend skirt. Er, t, skirt. Put the SK together. It's a blend. Sk, er, t, skirt. Good job. Underneath. Ready? Sk, er, t, skirt. Do it again. Sk, er, t, skirt. Way to go, guys. You made so many words today. I'm so proud of you. You did such a good job. Even though I can't see those beautiful faces and call on your names, I do see your names here. Oh, look at Cameron. Look at what Cameron did. Cameron did first, firm, girl, dirt, shirt, skirt. Woohoo! Way to go, bud. So proud of you. Good job. And you're all writing skirt. I'm so proud of you. Now, boys and girls, if I'm freezing on your home screen, it has to do with too many internet browsers open. Close all the other browsers except for Facebook. That will help your streaming capabilities, okay? Good job, guys. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some hearts. Give me a jiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Jiggle, wiggle, wiggle. We want to jiggle and wiggle to keep our brains moving. All right, here we go. We are going to do some writing, and we're going to talk about cause and effect today. Now, we know that Ben Franklin invented many things, right? We know that because we read about Ben Franklin today. So today, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, oh, I should have did that. I should have did, uh, wrote this before, but I didn't. We're going to talk about cause and effect. Now, if you were here during one of our first sessions, we talked about cause and effect, and I gave you a little clue to say, what happened? We take our fingers. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? So I want you to think about it. Think about a short, simple sentence of what happened. Now, I'm going to give you one. Now, do you remember on the last page, the two last pages, we learned that Ben Franklin invented the lightning rod, right? So I'm going to write, that's what happened. Ben Franklin invented the lightning rod. Now, I'm going to write just Ben. I'm going to keep it nice and short. Ben invented the lightning rod. I'm just going to do this quick. Now, remember, you are doing it on your notebook or I gave you a little tablets book. So what we're doing, if you are using this booklet, we are writing down. It's much easier to start with the effect when we're thinking 
It's what happened because of the cause, right? So Ben invented the lightning, the lightning rod. So you would write that or draw a picture. You could even write it in this box or draw a picture. Ben Franklin invented the lightning rod. That's what happened. Now, why did he do that? What was the reason? We want to say the word because. Let me get another color and I'm going to show you. I'm going to put an arrow here and we're going to say the word because. And do you remember yesterday? B E C A U S C. B E C A U S C. Right? I taught you that yesterday. So here's how we do it. We say Ben invented the lightning rod because why did he do that? Now we're going to talk about the why. Why did he do that? Why did Ben Franklin invent the lightning bolt? Uh, the, the lightning bolt, the lightning rod. Why did he do that? And it told us in the book, told us in the book, it said that lightning's very dangerous. And Pete, Ben Franklin wanted to help keep buildings and people safe from being struck by lightning. That was why he invented the lightning rod, to keep buildings and people safe from being struck by lightning. So we're going to say, Ben invented the lightning rod because, now I'm going to write down what, why he did it. So I'm going to say, Ben wanted to keep buildings and people safe from lightning. Now, watch, what I, watch how we do this. So we talked about what happened. What happened? Ben invented the lightning rod. That's what happened. Ben invented the lightning rod. He did that. It happened in the book. It happened in history. Now we say, why did he do that? Ben invented the lightning rod because Ben wanted to keep buildings and people safe from lightning. That was why he invented it. Now watch what we do. Now we can read it forward. We could read it this way using the word so. Now I'm going to show you. We read it both ways. Now watch. I'm going to read it this way using the word so. Ben wanted to keep buildings and people safe from lightning, so Ben invented the lightning rod. So when you're doing cause and effect relationships, boys and girls, you can do it both ways. The easiest way to start and figure out a cause and effect relationship is saying, what happened? What happened? What happened, right? What happened was Ben invented the lightning rod because he wanted to keep buildings and people safe from lightning, being hit by lightning, right? Or we could read it forward. Ben wanted to keep buildings and people safe from lightning, so Ben invented the lightning rod. This is how you can read cause and effect statements both ways, using the word because, B-E-C-A-U-S-E, -E, or the word so, all right? That's one cause and effect relationship. Now, Ben did so many things in this book, right? I mean, really, look at all the things that we learned about. We learned about the swimming fins. We learned about the almanac. We learned about the, um, the street lamp. We learned about the odometer. We learned about the bifocals. We learned about the Franklin stove. There are so many cause and effect relationships in this book because you know why? Ben Franklin wanted to solve problems that people were having. So he was like, hmm, what are some problems that people are having? That's how the best inventions are created, is when people solve a problem that other people have. They invent something. Maybe you can invent something one day. So let's look at this one. This one, <laughs> this one was some invention, the bifocals. Now you can't tell but I have contacts in my eyes. And you wanna know the coolest thing about the contacts that are in my eyes? They are also bifocals. They actually call them multifocal. How cool is that? Because not only does it let me see far, but it also lets me see close for reading. 
just like his bifocals, but mine go in my eyes for contacts. How cool is that, right? And there are many people that wear glasses and the top of the glasses are for seeing far and the bottom of the glasses are for seeing near, like reading glasses. And I bet if you ask mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, cousins, friends, say, hey, do you wear bifocals? I bet you you'll find people that do. All right, so let's think about this. Why did Ben Franklin invent these bifocals? So we're gonna say, what happened? What happened? What happened? Okay, well, Ben invented bifocals. That happened, is that right? Yes or no, give me a thumbs up. Did Ben invent bifocals? Yes, he did. So I'm gonna erase what I have here about our lightning rod because that was our first one. Ben invented bifocals. That was something he did. So I'm gonna write that down. We say, what happened? What happened? Ben invented bifocals, period. All right, so we know what happened. Ben invented bifocals. Now you say, well, why did he do that? Why did he do that? Well, let's think. Ben invented bi bifocals because, and then here's what he said. Here's what the book said. Franklin had two pairs of glasses. One pair was for reading. The other pair helped him to see things far away, which is the kind of glasses I have. I just have contacts in now. Franklin didn't like having to change his glasses. So he invented double spectacles or bifocals. So the reason why he invented bifocals because, was because he didn't like having to change his glasses. That's why he invented it. Because if he can't see something far away, he'd have to put glasses on. And then when he wanted to read a book, he'd have to change his glasses and put the other glasses on. And some of your parents might still have to do that if they don't have bifocals. So Ben invented bifocals because, and we're gonna say what the, what the book said, Ben didn't like having to change his glasses. So I'm gonna write, Ben didn't like having to change his glasses. Okay, now let's read it both ways. So, Ben invented bifocals because, this is the cause, Ben didn't like having to change his glasses. Change from bifocal, change from far away glasses to close glasses, reading glasses. Far away glasses, reading glasses. Far away glasses, reading glasses. He didn't like it. It annoyed him. So he fixed it. Ben invented bi bifocals because Ben didn't like having to change his glasses. Now read it forward. Read the cause first and what the effect was. This is what he did because of this problem. This was the problem here. The cause is the problem. Ben didn't like having to change his glasses, so Ben invented bifocals. So you, as you can see, when you're thinking about cause and effect relationships, you could think about them and read them using the word because or reading the word so, when you talk about the problem first and then the solution. So not only is, can we say this is the cause and this is the effect, it's also like the problem and solution, right? It's kind of like that. In this case it is. So this was his problem and this is how he solved it. Cause and effect. The effect was what happened because of this situation. So that's what cause and effect relationships are. And you can get cause and, relate, cause and effect relationships from almost any book you read, any book you read. Like you could say, I am hungry because I didn't eat breakfast yet, which is true. And my stomach's growling. That's a problem. <laughs> So you can think of your own cause and effect relationships. Think about what's happening. I'm hungry. And why? Because I didn't eat breakfast yet. That's a cause and effect relationship. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to go back, read this book again, or listen to the book again. It's on my YouTube channel, or you can watch this, and do your little Tabbits book. You write the cause and effect relationship, 
and you can sketch a picture. This is your homework, my friends. In addition to this, don't forget, we always have our text-dependent questions because we want to connect the reading and the writing. When we connect reading with writing and thinking, we are smart, and it makes us even smarter. Every time we connect reading to writing and thinking, it makes us smarter. So do your text-dependent questions as well. And remember, you cut it out, you glue it in your notebook, and you flip open the flaps, and you answer the questions. So you can do these at home as well to practice answering questions based on the book we read. You know you can go read it again. And I want you to do more cause and effect relationships today. Think about it. Think about your day as you go on with your day today. Think about things that you did. I played a game with my sister. Well, why did you do that? Why did you play a game with your sister? Well, because I was bored. I wanted to have fun. I missed playing board games. There's lots of reasons you do things, right? I went to sleep at 10 o'clock last night. Well, why did you do that? I went to sleep at 10 o'clock because that's my bedtime, right? Or maybe you went to sleep late because you were watching a television show or a movie. Everything you do is a cause and effect relationship. Just think about it that way. If you use the word because, you are doing a cause and effect relationship. If you use the word so, you're showing a cause and effect relationship and you don't even know it probably. So good job to you, thumbs up to you. I want you to think about more cause and effect relationships. I want you to reread Brent Franklin on my YouTube channel. And I want you to answer your text dependent questions because thinking, writing, and reading makes us smarter, right? So boys and girls, even though I couldn't see your beautiful faces today, you did a fabulous job and I'm super proud of you. And moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, nannies, babysitters, those of you that are home, please, again, share this Facebook feed out and tell other parents about it. It helps me reach more people. Again, for those of you that want to continue your reading instruction because we will be home for another two months probably, I am going to provide you this calendar for free for learning to continue your child's reading and writing learning exactly what we do here every day. And you could just join Guided Readers. It's a very low monthly price. It's only $14.99. And you can cancel at any time, even if it's just to get you over this hump for the next couple of months. I'm here for you. And Guided Readers is here for you. And again, remember, when you support me with through Guided Readers, I support my employees that work for me because they need to still keep working as well. So your support helps me support the people that work for me as well. So we're all trying to support each other. So that's why I'm doing these free lessons every day to support children at home, to support parents who need a little bit of a, of a, of a break maybe. I'm with you, I'll get it. So I'm doing this because I love it, I wanna help and be there for you and your child. Again, tomorrow we will be doing a live, we will be doing a live Zoom room. But the only way you're going to be able to get into the live Zoom room is if you join our private Facebook group. The private Facebook group link is above and you have to answer the questions to get in. If you don't, you will be, you will be denied access to the group. It's for the safety of our children so we can have a private Zoom link every time we go live. That will protect our children and our safety on Zoom, which is the most important thing. We wanna keep reading, having fun, having a good time and learning, but we also need to do it in a safe manner. So if you want your child to keep learning with me and reading with me, I'd love to have them. It brightens my day every day, but please you have to join the private Facebook group. And again, that's to keep our children safe and we have a private Zoom room. So again, those of you that are on live, thank you so much. Please, again, click that share button. Join Guided Readers. It helps me help others. And it allows me to keep teaching every day because it allows me to bring money in and pay my employees and keep coming live with you. So you support me. I support you. I support other people. And that's how the world goes around. That's how we all help each other in a situation that we're in right now. So thank you so much for watching. And boys and girls, I since we're not on Zoom today and we are on Facebook, I'm going to answer some of your questions. So if you have a question, you could type it and I will answer it. So I, uh, Esperanza says, love you. I love you too. Thank you so much, Esperanza. 
Let's see, Michelle says, yay! I'm so glad, Michelle. Let's see if there are any other questions. Uh, let's see, what book, are, I, you know, you, Ashley says, what book are we reading tomorrow? Oh, Bristol, hi, Bristol, how are you? Didn't you ask me that yesterday too? Anya, do we know what book? <laughs> I'm not prepared again. You guys are gonna make me prepare. Anya, do we know what book we're reading tomorrow based on the <laughs> based on the uh, the website? Can you let me know, Anya, uh, what book I'm reading tomorrow? Bristol, I'll let you know in one second. Um, give me one second. I'm not 100% sure what book we're gonna read tomorrow, but I'm gonna answer you in one second. Thanks, Bristol, I'm so glad you were here again today. Um, let's see, oh, Oh, okay, Bristol, here's the answer. We're gonna read the book, Planes, Trains, or Cars. Planes, Trains, or Cars. It's a fictional story, it's actually realistic fiction, and that's what we're gonna read tomorrow. So, um, oh, so C. Uh, Marquis Carter said, how do you use shaving cream? So the way you use shaving cream is super simple, but always do it with an adult, because we want adults around. And what you do is you take a little bit of shaving cream, and you should put it on the table and then you just swish it around with your hand, right? And then you take your finger and you write the sight words, A, B, O, V, E, above. It's a tactile way of helping us learn our sight words. So that could be another way you practice it. So children and people learn in lots of different ways. People learn through just listening. People learn through reading. People learn through writing. People learn through touching and tactile. And that's what the shaving cream is. The shaving cream is a tactile activity that tells our brain, remember it. So that's just another way for us to learn. So I hope that helps. Thanks for the question. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, my son... Jake loves watching your videos. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jake. So glad you're here. So good to have you. So glad. Um, let's see. <laughs> Aiden's like, what are we doing on Monday? Aiden, you're killing me, bud. <laughs> you're killing me, bud. I have to be that, that prepared, that far in advance. Oh, boy. I got to get my stuff together because you guys are, you're like my boss. You're like, let's go. What's next? So I don't know yet, Aiden. <laughs> I don't know yet, my friend. I'm going to have to let you know. <laughs> I don't have that one. Um, Esperanza, we will definitely do Zoom. You just have to join our private Facebook group. Um, so uh, Cameron says, how do you get Zoom on tomorrow? You have to join the private Facebook group. And then in the private Facebook group, I will post the Zoom link. It's going to be a different Zoom link every day which helps to protect the security of our Zoom room. So every day I'll post his new Zoom link in the private Facebook group. So you don't have to watch it on Facebook. They can do it on Zoom with me like we've been doing. But the way we protect our children in a private Zoom room is by allowing you into in our private Facebook group, which is where I will provide you with the private Zoom link. So you have to join the Facebook group. My assistant is writing that in the comments for you as well. So it says, um, Emily loved learning about Ben Franklin. Thank you so much for your incredible lessons. I used to teach second grade, you're amazing. Oh, thank you, Meredith, and thank you, Emily. Hey, Emily, my older sister is named Emily. <laughs> so I'm so glad you like the lessons. I have to tell you, I love doing them. It brings me a tremendous amount of joy every day, truly. It really brightens my day, and it's so much fun. So thank you. Let's see, let's see. Um, uh, how do you join it? Oh, Latanya, there's a link to the Facebook group in the description on Facebook and on YouTube. I believe the link is called, I'll tell you right now, the link is called bit.ly forward slash reading at home with Anna, all lowercase. So it's bit.ly forward slash reading at home with Anna. That's how you get into the Zoom room or into the Facebook room. And then that's where I'll provide the links. So uh, um, let's see. Uh, uh, I think I'm saying uh, Majin or my Jin or I love the book. Thank you. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. I apologize. Uh, let's see. Christine says, I'm not always able to catch these wonderful lessons live. Do you or will you have these recorded and available somewhere on a site for viewing after the fact? Currently, right now, Christine, they are all available on my Facebook page, 
readwithanna.com. They're all there now. I haven't taken any of them off. And I finally figured out how to get them on YouTube. So now they're live on YouTube, but all of them aren't there. I only figured out we... We were having a lot of problems with YouTube, but now they're there. I think the last three or four lessons are on YouTube, but they are all on my Facebook page and they won't be going anywhere. Hope that helps. Uh, let's see. Let's see if there's any other questions. There's no Zoom room today, tomorrow. Okay. Um, it says, Caitlin will be coming late because her first class is live until 1115, but then she'll be able to be here. Well, that's good that Caitlin's meeting with her teacher, with her real teacher in real life. That's good. I'm so glad. I'm happy about that. That's terrific. Um, okay, so I hope, uh, let me say, someone said, Neil said, I think I just, oh, Neil says, what words will we have tomorrow? Another one, Neil. You want me prepared this early in advance? My goodness. You're worse than my bosses. <laughs> I don't know, Bubala. I have to, uh, I used to call all my students Bubala. So sorry, that's just typical for me. I will have to let you know tomorrow, my love, because I did not print any of that out yet, but I will, and I'll be here for you at 11 o'clock. So let me just see, make sure there's any, um, yes, I'm getting all of the requests. I will be accepting everybody in, within the next little while once I get off. So again, those of you that are watching on Facebook, again, please click share. This helps me reach more people, reach more children, reach more, reach more parents. Please join Guided Readers. It helps me help my employees. It makes the world go round. It keeps our economy going. It's only $14.99 a month, and you can cancel at any time. And you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books on Guided Readers, all the way from kindergarten through fourth grade, all the way. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books for your children to listen to, to read, to record themselves reading, to take quizzes, to answer questions. There's so much available for you on Guided Readers to keep your children reading and learning during our home learning time right now. And that's what we wanna do. We want our kids continuing to learn and read and progress so they don't regress, most important. So thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Boys and girls, I am so proud of you. Even though I couldn't see your beautiful faces today, I know you were doing a good job because you've been doing a good job every day during Zoom. So tomorrow, I will see you in Zoom again for our new book, Planes, Trains, and Cars. It's a fictional story. It's realistic fiction. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Again, parents, please share this out. It helps me. And thank you for joining today. Mwah. I love you guys lots. So good to have you here today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for working hard. Remember, reading, writing, thinking helps us to become smarter. Good job, boys and girls. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye for now.